Good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully you're well. Let me scoop back a little bit here. How are you guys? Um, hope you're staying safe wherever you are around the world. And for those of you on YouTube, thank you so much for joining me on this Instagram moment every Tuesday noon Pacific. We have a lot of fun with my friends and family. Busy some donuts in that 9.35? Yes, so it's right there. As a matter of fact, it's balancing. And what do I mean by that? So I have this pretty clever battery management system, which I validated with this. This is an Orion tap validation tool. And I installed a battery management system, a new one that monitors every cell. So I have 96 cells in the rear of that car and 96 cells in the front. And what it does, it makes sure that each voltage is exactly the same within 0.01 volts to give me a lot more life, longevity, and I would say performance out of the vehicle. So right now it's sitting quietly, plugged into a charger and it's balancing. It's been balancing for about three hours now. I may need another day or so and then it'll be good to go. What is the next car you're going to build next? Huh? There is, I'm going to do another 935. And that's all I can say is going to be very exciting because I'm on the fence on what I'm going to do technology wise, but it'll be very, very exciting. And it's a 935 known as the M16. So it's a little bit different from the Crema. It's an M16 AR and it's pretty nice. So that's my next project. I just bought my first car, it's a 99 SC300. What should buy my first mod? Exhaust, first one. And why do you do exhaust? Whatever rubbish oil you have in there, get rid of it and go with some Purell, because that's another performance adder as well, and you will benefit tremendously. How many parts are missing in electric car versus internal combustion engine cars? Do tuning be the same from now on? How many parts are missing? That's kind of a weird question, but I think I know where you're going, B. Liviu. Now, put it this way, there are very few mechanical parts that exist compared to internal combustion engines. So what that means is less components to turn, less components that can fail. So it's pretty straightforward. But on the tuning aspect, the window opens up very nicely. Yes, you can play around with timing in such a way where you can play around with current or play around with the motor output. You can play around with fail safe, which is very important. I'm learning that very quickly. You have the opportunity to play around with the power delivery. So you can make it mimic an internal combustion engine with low torque, peak torque and falling off. You have the opportunity to play with you know, how the torque is being realized to the wheels. You can play around with traction control. If you have um, individual motors per half axle or per, you, you, can, you can vector. There's so many things you can do in terms of tuning. Um, so it's a whole new window and a whole new learning curve for tuners out there that embrace it. And if you're a tuner, I would highly encourage you to do what I'm doing, which is embracing the future because this is what's going to be happening, whether we like it or not. I mean, you know. Can a post chamber be used on a Honda setup? Yes, DJ. Um, post chambers, as my first post chamber was on a GK5 fit. So it doesn't matter as long as it's internal combustion. Um, it could be used on a two stroke or four stroke. It, it, it's, as long as it has an exhaust system where well, pulses exist, it can be done. Absolutely. Is there a significance why you chose the 42 for 935? Yes, Banzai. There are two, two reasons for that. Um, one is there actually was a Gozi Porsche, Gozi Porsche, which is a Japanese team, which is great for me because my company is BC Moto. It sounds like Japanese. My first vehicle is Japanese, so there's kind of a that time there. Had a 42, but believe it or not, one of my most favorite movies in the world is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And if you know what movie that is, you know the significance of number 42. As a matter of fact, I do have my own ludicrous mode in this, which there's a switch on my dash that you initiate it with. And when you do that, it says, <laughs> improbability mode. So for those of you who are Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you'll know what that means. <laughs> so it's, it's and, and that mode just, it eliminates any limitations whatsoever, except for thermal ones but any safety limitations are off. So it allows me to have full power and go bananas with this thing. And I tested it um, on Saturday, almost crashed. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Anyway, so it was a lot of fun. I want more power for my E39 E39 M5. Would you recommend supercharging it for the street? Absolutely, <laughs> I would. Is there a formula for finding the right size pulse chamber for the tone you want to eliminate? There is an algorithm that took a long time for me to develop. And now, because of that, based upon engine RPM, where the drone exists, and engine displacement, I can create one on that. So there is a formula for it. 
but it's something that you have to create yourself. Thoughts on the 19 Spider says waited for. It is the ultimate hybrid. I love that card. It's a card that I wouldn't mind acquiring and modifying. But what I don't like about a 918 is for service, the whole thing has to come apart. You guys may have seen one of my Tech Tuesdays at, at McKenna Porsche, one of our good partners in terms of Porsche dealerships. On a major service, the whole rear end, the whole car has come apart. It's crazy. Benefits of center seat setup, said Philip trailer. Balance. It is the most exciting experience I've ever had. It, honestly, every car should be a center seat. I wish I could do an electric, ooh. Electric 911 center seat, that would be dope, wouldn't it? Kind of selfish because you can't take anyone for a ride in it, but on a, for a track car, it is so balanced. And what we've done, and Sam, hopefully, you're still here because Sam was very instrumental to this, is the seat is fixed, especially in the mid engine car. So you have the engine in the middle, right there, right? The seat is fixed, the steering, steering was telescoped, and the pedals telescope as well, or could be moved forward and backwards. So whether someone like myself who's six foot tall or someone who's five two, the center of gravity stays still. The balance is there, but then the pedal and the steering wheel moves forward. So in terms of driving enjoyment, there's nothing that's more balanced. Left to right is just amazing. It's like a go-kart on steroids. It's amazing. Especially when you put some power to it, especially with something like the Hot Wheels one, which has a Hot Wheels mode button, which is a push to pass, which adds, I have two options here, and I know they're going to tell me to do the second option, but the first option adds 118 horsepower with a button. The second option adds 183 horsepower, which is... That may be too much. It may just break tires loose. <laughs> so I don't think that's a good idea. But um, what I have on my red one is just a 100 horsepower gain, which is pretty cool, you know? Engineering Rai, every time I hear your story, it makes me want to work hard and, and to be happy to engineer you are. Thank you, Engineering Rai. You're very kind. But it's a lot of work. Um, it's so weird. I was just telling my intern the other day when I was working on my cars. It's like, people say how lucky you are, BC. You have all these cool cars and so on and so forth, but they have no idea. I think it was also Fabian I was studying as well. They have no idea what I go through. I cut myself, how much work it is, how I'm here alone at night, I'm away from my family, working hard, um, dealing with people who try to, to hurt my projects, dealing with people who try to um, push me, put me down, and so on and so forth, and dealing with naysayers. It's just, it's a lot of pressure and a lot of things are not so glamorous, but still I have to push forward to make things happen, you know? Thinking about making it center seat. Now, and I'll put the work to design that it can. Yes, you should. It's a lot of fun. The key thing is that as you remove sections of the hump to make center seat, bear in mind, as you can do this in CAD, you can definitely put in as much information as you can to see what stretch levels exist. You need to reinforce that, and you see in every center seat, I do tend to cage it. So Sam does a great job in putting the cage and tying all the points together so you can still have that structural integrity. Um, when you do remove sections of the center hump, it does significantly weaken the chassis. So make sure you do a lot of fair analysis and make sure that you do take into consideration all the stressors that exist so that you don't have a car that is not safe, okay? So you can do it, it'll be great, but it'll be fantastic. Any plans to add electric conversions to other Porsches or customers' cars? Yes, that is our plan. So this is a proof of concept. And with some of my partners that exist out there, um, we are going to continue to open up our facility to electric conversion. The very next one I have here is the Canerham right there in the corner. So that'll be the next electric conversion we'll have for a client. And after that, we have a couple of Porsches in line as well. So yes, and if you have interest, get on, call in, get in the queue, and you should have a good time, you know, as well. Kevin Moore, like it, Kev out. I think you just missed out. You're asking how to tune an electric car. Um, there are quite a bit of things you can tune. So you're asking about putting a bigger battery. It's not that simple. You could increase the performance of your setup by using the same voltage output, but increasing the amount of battery packs and putting them in parallel. So for example, that's a 400 volt system I have in that. Now, if I had, let's say, only one of the battery packs in there, I would hover around maximum output of 800 amps, right? But by adding two battery packs, I now have the capability of 1600 amps. And above and beyond that, my range now increases. Even though my voltage is still the same, the performance output is increased. If I want to increase it even further, I put a third battery pack in parallel, which is pretty interesting, but it gets pretty expensive at that point. But yes, you can add components in terms of batteries to be able to improve the performance of your setup. You can also do very clever things with your controller to make that happen as well. <laughs> How much does it cost for an electric engine as you have in your Porsche? It's very expensive, salt and pepper jewels. So, it depends on the amount of performance you want. So I'll, I'll tell you how crazy it is. You can actually have a range. You can go with something very, very simple. 
with a single small motor with adapter plate bolted to a gearbox. You can do a full kit, like 100% if you do a lot of work yourself, for about a little bit over $20,000, okay? Something of this nature will cost you easily 60, of that nature, 60 grand. And that doesn't include installation, just in components alone. So it's, it's, it's not cheap, but it's not super expensive, because if you think about it, a 600 horsepower air-cooled Porsche engine of that caliber will cost a lot more than that. Um, the twin turbo water cooled engine in my blue 911 is close to $90,000 for that engine. And that includes the engine, the gearbox, the components, the sleeving, the building, the headwork, the valve train, the ECU, the wiring, all that stuff adds up. So it's, this is a lot more cost effective than a similar power output petrol engine. Simon is asking, any advice for a young Nigerian car enthusiast trying to build up a dedicated automobile channel? Yes, content. Do, I don't care if you go around local hotels and talk to owners of high-end cars. Do whatever you can to put out content and your channel will grow. What type of computers do EV cars use? What did you use? So Josh Wonderbread, um, in the very few weeks or months, I should say, AEM will have a commercially available controller for all EV cars. And that gives you an opportunity to be able to tune and put some fail safes that I find extremely appealing. In the case of this, when we started off, I had a bespoke controller, a uh, very popular gentleman by the name of Jason um, Hughes. He actually helped with this and created the protocol, the CAN protocol for, or coding, I should say, for the controller. So that being said, that's what I have in this. Um, I incorporated a race pack PDM to do a lot of the controls as well. And then I wrote a ton of CAN. And in terms of battery management, I'm using an Orion BMS2, which is extremely clever. And they all communicate with each other via CAN. So through CAN2, I have the AM dash communicating. I have it communicating with my controller and I'm communicating with the BMS. And I have both, I have two BMSs, one in front and one in the rear, which is pretty nice. Would it be possible to make a regenerative brake, brake pedal? Yes. That's totally programming. What I have now is, in this I have about 140 kilowatts of regen, and when you let off the throttle, it automatically does that, and the only time it reduces is based upon feedback via CAN through my Orion BMS, and when it sees that the state of charge is very high, it sends a signal to my controller not to initiate very high regen so you don't overcharge the battery. So I hope that helps.